Hello everybody, Jared0987 here, and I would like to speak to you a little bit today about uh, different ways that you can make a cipher text alphabet. Uh, specifically, I want to talk to you about this whole K1, K2, K3, K4 thing that you see in the aristocrats and the patristocrats. I'm going to explain to you what that is, what it means, and how you can write a computer program to take advantage of that information and break the cipher. Uh, so, what the heck is that all about? These, uh, these ciphers were made ages before anybody had a computer. Um, but also, they're made to be easy to use by the people that know the key but difficult to use by people who don't have the key. So one of the things about making it easy is to make it easy to remember how to do. So up here I have the plain the plain text alphabet A through Z and my key would be some scrambled up version of that alphabet. Well, if I have to memorize some scrambled up version of the ciphertext alphabet, that could be really annoying and difficult. And what if I forget? <laughs> that could be bad. Uh, well, that's hard enough, but what if I'm the spy master? What if I'm the captain of the king's guard? Or, or what if I'm uh, some diplomat and I have a whole bunch of spies that I talk to and they all have a different key because I don't want them being able to figure out who my other spies are and what they're saying, right? Um, now I would have to remember, who knows, 5, 10, 20, 30 different arrangements of 26 letters. That's maddening. Who could do that? Um, so there's an easy way. The easy way is to use a keyword, and this is how it works. You start with a keyword. I'm using apple because you know how much I love the word apple. And the first thing is take out any repeating letters. Just take one out. So we have A-P-L-E. Now we write that down, A-P-L-E, and then we're going to write down all the rest of the plain text alphabet that wasn't used already. So we have B, C, D. What about E? Well, E was already used, so we don't write it again. F, G, H, I, J, K, L. L is already used. M, N, O, P is already used. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, and then we put it all together, and voila, we have a scrambled up ciphertext alphabet that we could now use to to make codes with. And it's easy to remember; anybody can do it. All you have to do is remember a keyword. Theoretically, as long as the enemy didn't know your keyword, they'll never get this thing in a million years. Well, there's a problem. When you line this up underneath the plain text alphabet, I'm down here by the way, um, you'll notice that a lot of these letters line up. Uh, that's not so great. In this case it happens to be the letters that aren't that common anyway, so it's not terrible, but it's still not that good. Uh, besides the fact that it's not allowed under the ACA rules, we would not be able to use this key. We'd have to throw it out and make a different key. Um, yeah, we would not like fragments of our words to be visible. Uh, for example here, you see that Q is uh, also Q. So anybody who knows much about breaking these kind of monoalphabetic ciphers uh, has heard about the magical Q, which means that Q is almost always followed by U, almost always. So whatever cipher letter came after the Q, if we knew that Q translated to Q, well, it would be, it would be uh, U. <laughs> In this case, we would know it was U, because that one didn't really get scrambled up either. But the point is, you really don't want to leak information like that. So what can we do about it? Well, do you remember the Caesar shift? What we could do is just uh, push it down a little bit farther, right? I could push it. I could shift it, right? I have this cipher alphabet and I shifted it only by one. That's all I need. 
And uh, what happens now when I line it up under the plain text alphabet is that none of the letters match up anymore. So that's that's better, by far better. But still, somebody could run a Caesar shift on the ciphertext and they wouldn't get every word, but they might get some partial words. They would line up, you know, this section of the alphabet that's really long and unbroken. They might be able to start to, to figure out what some of the words are. That's no good. Um, so... Yeah. So what else can we do? By the way, I could shift it down a lot farther, right? This still is not going to help the problem, but I wanted to tell you I don't have to just move it one or two spaces. I can move the APLE keyword anywhere in here. I can just shift the whole thing. Uh, we talked about modulo 26 before in another video that's all I'm doing I I just shift it down so what is this K1 K2 K3 stuff what is that all about here's an example of a K1 cipher right here it means that the plain text alphabet is the one that has the scrambled up alphabet uh, with a key word in it specifically the K ciphers it's basically telling you the cipher was made with a keyword. It doesn't have to be. Theoretically, it could be a r completely random letters with no keyword in them. But the K1, the K2, the K3, the K4, they're telling you we used a keyword to make this cipher alphabet. Doesn't mean that's all they did. They might have switched some letters around, but at any rate, here it is. So the K1 cipher there's a keyword somewhere in the plain text alphabet is scrambled up and the cipher text alphabet is actually the plain one. So I becomes L, S becomes K, W becomes Q, etc, etc. Well, so okay, what's a K2? Well, that's just the opposite, isn't it? The plain text alphabet is the normal one. This is what I'm used to, right? The plain text alphabet is the normal alphabet and the scrambled up one is the second one, right? So C becomes L, J becomes R, S becomes Y. Okay, fine. Well, what about K3? What is that all about? Can you guess? Here it is. K3 means that we use the same alphabet with the uh, scrambled up letters from our keyword for both of them, but they're shifted a different amount. Now this is an important concept because I want to talk to you about how you would write a program to attack this. If I had K1 or a K2 pro, uh, cipher I wanted to break, it's not that hard. What I would do is I would take a word list, right, a dictionary if you will, and I would say for every word in my dictionary file, every word in my word list, take that word, take any repeating letters out, generate a cipher alphabet for it, and depending on whether I tell the computer it's K1 or K2 type cipher, plug it into the appropriate, you know, either plain text or cipher text, and then decode the message and score it. And if the score is above a certain score, which I assume to be mostly English, this is something that's up to you how you write your program, show me on the screen what it is. All the best decodes are going to get displayed on the screen, and I'm going to probably find the plain text okay but there's a problem what if they have oh I what I would do is by the way I would make the cipher alphabet right uh, and then I would tell the computer try all 26 possible shifts that it could be okay 26 possible positions um, now what happens when I have what happens when I have the same thing twice well, I could shift P, the plain text alphabet to 26 positions. I could shift uh, the cipher text alphabet also to 26 positions. That's over 600 different possibilities for every word in the dictionary. And I have 170,000 words in my uh, plain text dictionary. In my, uh, w my word list, right? My dictionary. That would take forever. But I found a trick. There's something called an equivalent alphabet. 
And what that means, let's say that I take these alphabet here. This one is shifted plus two. This one down here shifted plus seven, right? You can see that U is Y, V is Z, W is A, X is P, etc., etc., etc. This is equivalent. If I say let's let's home this position in on this plain text alphabet, let's always shift the Apple uh, keyword to the beginning of the of the a cipher alphabet. Uh, what we get is this. This alphabet, if I also shift the bottom one the same amount, you know, two to the left, it's the same thing. U is still Y, V is still Z, W is still A, X is still P, Y is still L. It's the same cipher. It's the same key. It's an equivalent alphabet. It's exactly the same. The difference is they're shifted differently as far as me writing it down purposes, but they're equivalent because they're shifted away from each other the same amount. Relative to each other, it's the same code. It's the same cipher. So if I was going to attack a K3 cipher, I don't really have to do, you know, 25 times 25 possible shifts. I just make one alphabet with the keyword at the beginning and then I make the other alphabet 25 you know the 25 shifts for the other alf for the other one with the same keyword and I run all those possibilities through my decrypting and scoring algorithm I only show myself um, the best ones right and uh, that's it that's all I have to do so now K1, K2 or K3 I can, uh, if it's only one keyword, I can probably find it most of the time. I was able to break about 50% mm, of the, the uh, puzzles, both the aristocrats and the patristocrats this way. Um, I wrote a program that does this kind of attack and it worked uh, for about half of the puzzles. Uh, now there's a problem, is that what if they do more than one word for the keyword? What if they put apple and wagon into the same keyword? This starts to be a lot of computer time, a lot of combinations. I didn't write that program. I have other attacks that work faster. The last thing I want to show you is a K4. A K4 I also didn't write the program for. It would be too much computer time. As uh, far as I know, and what I did, what it, what it is is, I'm using a different keyword for each alphabet. See here, I used the apple for the keyword. Down here, I used wagon for the keyword. I got a totally different alphabet. And actually, you can shift either one of these to each of the 26 positions now. And uh, I did not write a K4 attack program. I, th I have other ones that are just faster. My hill climber works faster. If I'm doing an aristocrat, my dictionary attack usually works faster. I honestly even think that the pencil and paper people could probably break most of these puzzles before this program got done calculating. Uh, I th so I didn't write it. Um, so that is an explanation, what a keyword is, how to use it to generate an alphabet, and what is K1 and K2 and K3 and K4, and how you might go about writing a program to attack the keyword. Like I said, I cracked about 50% of the puzzles by doing this attack. Um, if anybody needs help writing their programs, uh, if you're using Python, you can ask me. If you're using some other language, other people can help you. Uh, I have a machine solving group. It's called Johnny and the Machine Solvers. You can message me. We'll put you in the group. It's not a problem. It's free. <laughs> and uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you next time.